This video is being made in response to an inquiry I've had from Melandra, who's asked me about the tune Zydeco Blues Fiddle. Well, I don't have the notation as such because it would take me probably to the back end of next month to try and figure out what I actually play on this tune. You see, because it was completely improvised from start to finish, I picked up the fiddle and um, just played right through without giving it a second thought and then added further instruments like bass, guitar and regular guitar etc. Um, so that was the way the tune was constructed. It wasn't done with any real forethought as such so I didn't actually notate the whole thing. However, I can show you some of the basic uh, riffs in the tune and of course if you're not familiar with that term I'm sure I'm sure you probably all are but if you're not it's, it's a hangover from the guitar playing side of things it's it's a it's a sort of it's a short melodies basically and in this particular tune there are a number of repeated melodies that I can show you the individual melodies quite straightforward and um, to demonstrate in this video so that it will give you a starting point if you fancy playing along or playing something similar. Um, I should explain with the blues fiddle and Zydeco as well, I, I do listen to a lot of Zydeco and blues music. I just love it. And uh, I think that's a hangover from my early days in the 60s when um, nearly everybody I knew was in a band. We all played guitar, drums, etc. And we were all playing the blues. Um, in, in England, possibly in the whole of the UK, there was a lot of interest in the blues in the 60s. And of course, we, we learned so much from the blues musicians in America at that time. Um, so that, that's, that's where my interest has sprung from, which is why I do enjoy making fiddle music in that style. Okay, so enough chit chat, let's get on with it. So the, chit, the you need a fiddle that's going to be fairly loud, um, because we're going to retune the fiddle to GD GD. In other words, it sounds like this. I'm going to play the bottom string first. Now the next one. That's G and D. Now I'm going to play what would normally be the A string, but it's now tuned to G. And then the top string, which would normally be E, but that is also tuned down to D. Now the reason I like this tuning is because it doesn't put a lot of strain onto the fiddle. Whereas if I tend to go up to say A, E, A, E, I think it puts a lot of strain on the fiddle. And this is a very old one. This was the first violin I ever bought um, when I worked down in London years ago in the 60s. And uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a beat up violin, this one. It doesn't play very well. Um, it's a bit of a, ma a beast, but it does have a loud sound and it does ring out. So it's perfect for this type of tune. Okay, so the um, tune itself, I'll go through individual riffs. So I'm going to now start off with the, um, where the tune starts from. So what I'm doing there, I'm just simply playing a slide onto the A string and then I'm going down onto the uh, D string. Nothing too tricky. The next part is this on the A string.
okay, I'll play it again. And then there's another bit now on the E string. Onto the A. Now onto the D string. And then I play on the A string, I play a unison note. What I mean by that, my ring finger is on the third note and I slide it up to the fourth note. And I also play the open E. Well, in fact, it's not the open E, is it? It's the open D. So that's the first part of this tune and um, that's what I made up at the time. So I'll play it again. Uh, three, four. Now we've got a bit on the A string now with the first finger. Nice slide there. And then bring your middle finger down onto the next note. I'll do that again. Okay, let's take it from the top. Three, four. You may notice what I played there the second time through was fractionally different from the first time through. That's the thing about the blues. It, it doesn't have to stay the same throughout. You, you, can, you can change it. And this is why it's important, I think, to listen to a lot of this type of music. To get it, to get it in your, in your, almost in your blood so that you don't have to think twice about the melody. And, and to be able to just improvise without thinking about it. And, and I think that's, that's the beauty of this music. It's very loose, it's very free. It's, it's, it's great fun to play. It's great fun. Okay, so moving on. Now, there's a nice bit down on the, on the G string. So that's just simply the G and the D. Okay, again. Okay, now here comes the tricky bit. It's a double stop. So I'm playing the th my ring finger on the third note of the G string. And my first finger is on the first note of the D string. It gives me that. And then I take my ring finger off and I've got my middle finger down on the second note of the G string. Okay, I'll play the whole thing so you can hear it. OK, 
Okay, so what I'm doing, I've got the double stop. Then I'm releasing my middle finger off that second note and playing the open G along with the um, with the E. And now I play a C sharp with my little finger, my pinky. So I'll play it again. make a whole video about that bit because it's quite tricky. Um, I'll play it one more time. And then I think we play that A thing again. And we do a unison on the A string. Oh, no, it's not the A string, of course. It's now a D string. And I'm, I'm simply um, playing two Ds. So I'll start from that bottom bit again. <clears throat> It's quite nice, it's a unison on that D string. Okay, it's tricky. I think that might be in first position, what a classical violinists would call first position because my hands moved up one step, so I guess I'm in first position. Whoa! And then you can just drop into the bottom. And so on. You just keep adding the riffs around and just keep playing the riffs, trying to keep in that 12 bar format and trying to bear in mind of the chord structure of a 12 bar as well. Um, I'll play the whole thing. I'll play it quite slowly so that it will give you an example of what this tune should be like. <laughs> famous last words. I'll probably make so many mistakes now. Anyway, here we go.
start, you probably heard that I was imp improvising like crazy. Basically, because there's a series of riffs, short um, melodic passages, I suppose you could call a riff, and you can just move them around in the tune as long as you keep within that 12 bar chord structure. Um, there is a definite structure with 12 bar music. Um, the chords are um, usually in a sequence that follows a regular pattern. And as I say, you need to listen to a lot of blues music, um, Zydeco music, anything that follows that style. Um, and then it, gradually it becomes ingrained into your um, in, into your play, playing. You, you just don't have to think about it. So anyway, that that's hopefully that covers the points that you were asking me, Melandra, and anyone else who may be interested. And I'm sure there will be some interest in this. Uh, well, I hope so anyway. And, um, and I've tried to provide a few pointers and have fun with your fiddle play and I'll see you again very soon.